pleased to be joined with Andrew S. Hebert. You are a professional artist. You're here in Winnipeg, and you have an art show going on right now until September 14th. So it's near the end, and we're going to chat about that in just a couple minutes. But I guess to start, you know, what has your journey in art looked like? Was this always like your dream of what you wanted to do? Um, as a child, when I was in church, I would be drawing pictures of tractors. In high school, I was this, the school cartoonist. And my dream was to become an artist. Uh, but then as I got older, the, and I graduated from university, graduated from Bible school, I applied to advertising art, um, but that didn't work out as well as I would have liked. So then I jumped tracks and I became a teacher and I switched completely and I be, entered into the science world. But in my forties, uh, life got difficult and I found myself just going back to art as a therapeutic practice. And as I engaged in art and I, and I discovered the life giving uh, effects of it, uh, I began to do it more and more and more. And then I, it moved from a therapeutic practice to a disciplined practice. And now it's a professional uh, practice that I have. And I realized that what I do actually has benefit for people and many people appreciate it and it makes a difference in their lives. And so my mission is to keep developing it so that when I retire, I'm just going to do this a hundred percent of the time. But currently I'm a, still a teacher at MBCI and I'm teaching chemistry and physics in high school. And I guess, yeah, like maybe going, going towards the art, how has it been, you know, kind of, like you said, you loved to do it as a kid and in high school was drawing and then you kind of you left, but then you came back. So what has that been kind of like kind of coming back to your passion and now kind of being able to inspire other people through that? Well, it's, it's uh, I just feel really honored that I was able to pick it up again and that uh, it sort of God has given me this gift that I, I haven't had any official art training at all. Um, I have looked at a lot of art. I study uh, paintings and work that other people do, um, but I just sort of feel like it's just within me, and I just sort of have this drive that things need to be expressed, and that some ideas just need to be captured visually and shared with the world, and is just really exciting that I'm able to do it, and um, people appreciate it, so it's it's really wonderful. And I guess when you were going into teaching, was there ever the thought of like, okay, maybe I can become an art teacher, you know, kind of use that passion as well? Or was it like, okay, I want to kind of keep that separate from my job for right now? Well, when I, when I went into teaching, um, because I hadn't had any art training, I didn't have any confidence whatsoever that I could be taken seriously in an art context. And so for uh, many, many, many years, um, as I developed my art practice, I kept it completely secret because I had such low confidence. Um, but in the last seven years, my confidence has grown enormously. And now I feel very comfortable uh, sharing uh, what I do and uh, inviting people to come take a look and engage with me visually and artistically. And I mean, inviting people to come to see your art right now, you, like we said, you have, an, you have an art show that's going on right now until September 14th. So you know, maybe just like let the listeners know of like, you know, what can they expect if they come to check out some of your art? So I'm at Le Maison, the artiste in St. Boniface. And I'm in, they have two galleries there. I'm in a small gallery called Le Studio. And all of the work in the gallery is mine. It's a complete solo show. And uh, the work is sort of, it's, it's an allegory. There's about 13 different pieces. And each piece has a different component of the story of the journey of love. And each piece can sort of stand alone by itself, but it, it uh, as a group, it tells a story of uh, what I feel is, you know, that love is actually a journey rather than a single stage that you fall into and fi uh, fight desperately to stay in and don't want to grow out of. Um, I think love grows. I think it's organic and dynamic. And the art in the show uh, is very, it changes and the styles evolve and things sort of move as you progress sort of clockwise through the show. And it ends with a, a big a dramatic signature piece 
that sort of encapsulates sort of what I feel the ultimate goal of a relationship and love can look like. Yeah, so it's really just, I guess, yeah, like you said, telling a story of that, of that, of how you're interpreting it and everything. So when you're making art, you know, where do you get your inspiration from? Um, <laughs> I don't know exactly. It, it, I feel like it just sort of, it just comes to me. I'm always on the lookout, like whenever, whenever I'm going anywhere, I'm always looking for things that inspire me. And once my brain is sort of latched on to an idea or a theme or a question, it's like a magnet. I'm just like a magnet for ideas. And I try to think, oh, how can I integrate this, these ideas? And often I don't even know why or what is, what's actually happening until sort of after it's happened. And so my art is very sort of intuitive, but then afterwards I realize, oh my goodness, this is sort of what I was doing. And it just, it sort of hits me like, by surprise and it's really a wonderful thing to be surprised by one's work and is there maybe one piece that you've made that it's just every time you look at it you maybe you're like maybe more proud that that you made it or the story that it tells or things like that yeah the, the painting uh the, the signature piece of the of the of the show is a large um 66 inch by 66 inch uh, painting on uh, just unrolled canvas and it involved all kinds of styles and concepts and integration of materials that I had never done before in at ever and I had a vision for what I wanted to accomplish but I didn't know if I could do it and I didn't know how long it would took take and I was actually shocked at how long the piece took and had I known in hindsight how long it took I probably never would have done it but now that it's done, I am so exceptionally proud of it. It's called A Mingling of Three Parts. And it sort of sum, uh, summarizes what I believe it takes for love uh, to be strong in a relationship. And that there has to be a mingling of three parts. And um, from a Christian perspective, you know, the God, God is a third part that is in, has to be involved for things to be strong. And the, in the painting... The, the foundation and back layer of the painting is a scriptural passage from my wedding um, that's sort of printed out. And then over that, there are there is two additional layers, so it has three layers. And then stylistically, there's three different styles going on. And so it's just a mingling conceptually of three things with three things with three things. And um, it's really quite complicated. But I think when people just look at it, I think it has a beauty that people don't even have to know the full story of what all went into it to appreciate that, hey, this looks attractive, this looks interesting, and, there, and there's things going on here that the more they look, the more they can find. And how would you say, I mean, just kind of, we are just speaking right there, but how would you say your faith kind of plays into your art otherwise? Like other pieces, is it always, a, always in, integrated or is it just like kind of here and there? It's often sort of, it's, it's an undercurrent and it's sort of, it's a, it's like an invisible foundation or it's like the skeleton of everything that I do. So my, I wouldn't describe my work as overtly Christian uh, in the sense of like obviously so, but I think that my work, when you look at it, um, it's evident that I'm coming from a Christian worldview and um, like the signature piece is, sort of the most profoundly and uh, overtly Christian thing that I have ever done. But what I'm proud of is, is it's a mingling of the sacred, uh, the secular, and my own individual, personal, psychological parts. And so it's, it's not just sort of hitting people over the head with a Bible verse. It's sharing uh, the sacred text in conjunction with all of this other stuff that I live with, like I live in my own psychology, I live in a secular world where I'm influenced by all kinds of different features in art, and I'm just trying to piece all of these three things together. I'm trying to mingle them in a way that works and glorifies God. And so it feels, you know, for me, a Christian in that sense. But I think if some people came and looked at it, they might not overtly know that this is a sort of painted by an individual with a Christian worldview, somebody who loves Jesus. 
And if someone that's watching or listening to this is an is an aspiring artist, what advice would you give to them to, you know, maybe build that confidence, like you said, or just kind of get more comfortable sharing or just any piece of advice you would give? Well, the advice I would give would be threefold. One, just do it. Just buy some paints and just start and realize that it's a journey and just be gentle on yourself and sort of tone down the judgment of the quality of your work and just let the work grow because the more you do it, the better you're going to get. And so it's okay. And I think what's more important than being technically perfect in whatever sense for art is working at trying to be actually more and more vulnerable and honest. So just do it, work at being sort of vulnerable and honest with what you produce. And then lastly, start showing, start showing, uh, start with family and friends and then start slowly entering church exhibitions and slowly entering um, some other group exhibitions that are around town, maybe join Manitoba Society of Artists and slowly, slowly become a part of a bigger organization and uh, your confidence will grow and you'll realize you, you belong and every voice is important. Landry, it's been a pleasure chatting with you just right now. And you know, so maybe just pass those details on one more time, where your art show is, when is there a cost, things like that for the, for the CHVN listeners. So the art show is at 219 Provencher Boulevard. It's in a beautiful uh, brick old city hall building. It kind of looks like the Back to the Future building from <laughs> Back to the Future, the movie. Uh, there is elevator access. There's parking, free parking available. The exhibition is free. The gallery is open from 11 till 5.30. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, it's open, I believe, till four. Uh, and come on down, like it's, it's a beautiful space. And I think that anybody who comes will sort of have a nice opportunity to reflect and think about their own journey of love and how they think about love and uh, what love means. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your passion for art and can't wait to hear how it goes. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate this.